helped me jump in and get connected really quickly. So that's my little plug for, you know, somebody to take on the recorder position, especially new people. Um, it has, it, it's been a great um, experience for me. So anyway, thank you everybody. It's been a great four years and I look forward to seeing you all at Beaverton of Arts events and certainly the PRCA when that opens. And um, I, I'm in Massachusetts now uh, because my husband's uh, mom was put on hospice. So we're, I'm not in Beaverton for an extended period of time. And it just seemed like this was the right thing to do. So I wish you all, a, a great, successful, happy, healthy 2021. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for everything you did. You always had such a great smile and just stepped up for so many things. And we're just so grateful we had you for as long as we did and wish you the best, absolutely, yeah. for sure. Thank, thank you and take care. Yes, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for all your, your great input and words. And you always gave amazing input on the public art committee as well. Very thoughtful. And thank you for being our recorder. And so I, I will throw a pitch in. If anyone wants to be a recorder, um, it's, you can get, there is actually a training you can take. Uh, it's not terribly difficult, but if you, if you like, if you're one of those people that likes to do stuff, you know, that, um, it's, it's, you're really just taking, you know, notes from the meeting. Um, so anyway, we'll, we're going to have our elections next, next month, but if you're interested in doing that, let me or Shelly or both of us know. And then, um, I think we had a couple other, okay. Bye, Marielle. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of the people that are visiting tonight. Vicki. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Vicki Green. <clears throat> um, I'm a performing artist coach. Uh, I work with, um, I provide artistic coaching for serious performers and other creatives. I work with musicians, bands, actors, directors, playwrights, authors, um, also uh, coach other coaches. And, um, and I also am a vocal tracks producer and I do pre-production and post-production consulting for um, people who are recording, for recording artists. And I also, in the before times and hopefully the soon times, we'll be doing this again. I present master classes in performance for, um, for festivals and conferences and organizations, private groups, that sort of thing. Um, you can, if you're interested, you can check me out at vickygreen.com, pretty easy to find. Um, I've lived in the Portland area for most of my life, but I moved into Beaverton about a year ago and was uh, just curious to see what you guys are up to and also to provide uh, myself as a resource. Um, I, I've been working with clients online for years and years. So the Zoom world is something I've been in for a long time. So um, that's, that's probably the only bright spot of this whole pandemic experience working in the entertainment industry. Um, because uh, most of my clients are already used to working with me online, but it's um, it, I'm I'm letting myself be known out there because it's not something that a lot of people know about, um, and so uh, in the circles of artists and creatives, um, just wanted to kind of let you guys know that I do provide coaching, artistic coaching services for people out there. So I wanted to see what you guys are up to. So I'm here as um, as a citizen observer. Thank, so, you nice so you Thank you for doing the work that you do. Thank you. Um, I have, I have someone named Fiona here. Did you want to introduce yourself? Fiona Wang? Oh, hi. Um, I'm currently a high schooler at Sunset High School, and I'm also really interested into a lot of art related hobbies, such as dancing, um, piano, and then like drawing and painting. Mm -hmm. And then, so I learned about this committee through another organization called OCC. So I just joined the Zoom because I was curious what the Beaverton Arts Committee did, like what type of projects you guys participated in or created. Well, that's awesome. So glad that you're here. Anyone else want to introduce themselves? Razier or Chris? Hey everyone, go, go ahead Razier, you go first. Okay, I'm going to, I'll keep it short. If um, I want to introduce myself as the executive director of Tualatin Valley Creates. 
Um, I am so delighted by all your smiling faces as also being a past um, back member as well. Uh, so I just want to give you guys a quick update on what TVC is doing, if, if I can do that right quick. Uh, the way in regards to relating to what the Arts Commission is doing, we are installing new public art in Beaverton. It's called the Musical Bench. Uh, it's been delayed. I just want to give you guys that quick update because where we're installing it on the corner of Main and First, they've got the sidewalks torn up. So as soon as those construction guys are out of the way, much like your guys' PRCA, we'll get this new public art installed and I will be, uh, I'll come back to your commission hopefully with some pictures. In the meantime, I will share a link in the chat so you can see the other three musical benches that have been installed around the county. Um, I also want to tell you really quickly about TVC's professional development programming, networking events, and the partnership that we do with your art program, uh, the Creative Industry, sorry, Creative Impact Series. And I'll share a link with of those in the chat so that you can um, stay informed, stay engaged, get to network and mingle via Zoom with other artists throughout the county. We service the whole county, and so we try to bring these spaces together. And um, and then I want to give you a quick update because thank you, Shelly, for giving a plug for La Strada. So I'm also the, um, the board chair for an arts organization called 2D40, and 2D40 does an annual event called La Strada de Pastelli, which is a chalk art festival. And I hope that some of you got a chance to go last year. Well, actually, the year before. So in 2019, it was our inaugural, inaugural year. 2020, we actually still rallied artists together and we did a video festival, what we called an unfestival, which was then showcased in local businesses and went viral online. Um, we are working on a 2021 event with the top priority of it being safe. And so working with Chris and working with uh, many of your art commissioners here and Shelly is my co-coordinator and Jane runs our um, our vendors and Jim runs our entertainment and so everybody's kind of got a little part to play. Um, we are brainstorming on what to do for 2021 and where it will be held and how we're going to keep it a safe opportunity to still showcase chalk art and the creative process. So I will keep you guys posted on that as the, the weeks and months come along. Um, but I'll add some things to the chat so you guys can uh, see some of our links for TVC and see the video for uh, La Strada de Pastelli. Thank you. Hey everyone, Chris Azuki and welcome to the new members. Really happy to be back with you in the new year. This is a big year uh, because the Patricia Research Center for the Arts is gonna be complete. So yay, um, more on that in a little bit. I'll give you an update, but uh, I'm the executive director of the center uh, and I've been here for just over three years helping with the design of the center, as well as all the, uh, I guess you could call it all of the pl planning and operations for it, as well as uh, overseeing a capital campaign to raise the private funds for the center. Um, my background is in the performing arts management. Uh, I spent, I moved up here from Los Angeles uh, at that time in 2017. I was at the Hollywood Bowl and LA Philharmonic at Walt Disney Concert Hall for 17 years before that. and. I'm very excited about being in Beaverton, being in the area, love the area, uh, very excited about what the future holds for the arts uh, in this area and um, really excited by this community and how engaged everyone is. But um, I'll tell you more about the center in just a little bit. It's great to meet you all. All right. Is there anyone else? Did I miss anyone? I don't think so. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to give you guys a short presentation. Um, this is really um, a very short overview of sort of a year, the year in review 2020 uh, for the arts program. And so um, for the new members, this will be a, a, a very fast intro, even though, of course, I've talked to each of you individually of kind of the work we've been doing over the last year and then kind of a looking forward and then certainly open for uh, conversation, discussion, questions. Um, and also wanted to talk a little bit about as we go into this next year, how we're going to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion with the commission. Um, so, and I will, yeah, yeah. Do the approval of the October minutes. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. That's okay. I just didn't want to skip it. <laughs> Thank you. Just a, a quick, as everybody had a chance to look at, at the 
The meeting minutes from October 14th. Oops. Huh. So do we, your, your screen's already taking over. Do we? Yeah, I just queued it up, but you guys should be able to. Uh, Oh, come on. Okay, so has everyone had a chance to, I won't be able to see everybody, so <laughs> speak up if you haven't had a chance. Uh, so we have a motion to approve. I can I make, make a motion. motion. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Jane. <laughs> okay, I'll make the motion. This is Jane Dahl. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Awesome. Can I get a second? I second that. Awesome. Motion. So we've been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Awesome. Looks like it's unanimous. <laughs> move on. <laughs> All right, thank you. So I will say one thing is that for some reason on this tablet that I'm on every once in a while, the video will just cut out on um, on zoom and I can still hear everything and I just have to go to the zoom app and reopen it. So if that happens, you'll just have to bear with me for a few seconds, but it's working right now. So um, yeah, so 2020, as we've all made a note of earlier, was an interesting, crazy year. Um, and the arts program, um, we normally have uh, several what we call signature arts events uh, every year when we're able to do that in person. Um, and one of those events is called 10 Tiny Dances that we do every July. Um, it's a, we get um, five groups that choreograph uh, dances that fit within a four by four stage or they can use the stage create, create, creatively. Um, but this year, because we had to cancel the 10 Tiny Dances, um, we redirected that funding into what we just called COVID-19 Relief Grants. Um, and so, um, and we also provided stipends to all of the artists that had, had applied, which we felt really strongly about um, because it would, when, that, when the pandemic first hit, it was just such a devastating blow to our artists and arts communities. So we ended up providing them with a stipend. Um, and then funneled the rest of the funding towards COVID uh, relief grants. Um, we handed out $76,000 in COVID relief grants. Uh, the maximum grant amount was $7,000. Um, we awarded 18 grants. And out of those 18, four were organizations that had not applied for any grants from the city of Beaverton before. Um, it's always exciting to have new mm. folks apply for our grant programs. Um, and then we also normally do an event in uh, October called the Beaverton Arts Mix. Um, Peg mentioned that earlier. Uh, several of you has, have had work in the Beaverton Arts Mix, which is a show, juried show at the library. Rebecca, Shelley um, have also had work in that. Um, and so this year we did an online virtual show and we left it up for the whole month of October since, you know, we didn't need to limit it to one weekend. Um, and we featured 137 artists. Um, 367 artworks. And we were actually pleasantly surprised that we had over $6,000 in sales, um, given, you know, you know, most people aren't thinking I'm going to go to an online art show, right, and buy art. So that was really exciting. Um, that compares to last year, we sold over $16,000 in artwork. Um, and the city doesn't take any cut that goes 100% goes to the artists. Um, the image you see on the right hand side of the slides actually was our um, best in show winner. Um, <clears throat> and then um, Rosie, I mentioned earlier, but we collaborate um, every year on professional development um, and workshops and trainings for um, uh, artists and arts organizations. Um, and that's collaboration between the city of Beaverton, the city of Hillsborough and TVC. And we actually have one tomorrow that's talking about Washington uh, County Arts Grants. So maybe, um, Razier, do you want to put the link in, in the chat box while I'm talking? Um, and then this year, you know, most of the project grants that we normally hand out, um, our arts organizations were scrambling to try to figure out how they were going to do events this, 
this last year. Um, and so we ended up having meetings with all of our grant grant application applicants. Um, and um, we were really actually blown away by how creative our arts organizations and artists were being in addressing you know, the realities of the pandemic. And I suppose we shouldn't have been surprised because that's what artists do well is creative problem solving. Um, but it was really quite phenomenal. Um, and we handed out uh, over $27,000 in, in grants uh, for these organizations. Um, so between the COVID relief grants and these grants, um, this last year we handed out over $100,000 in grants to our local artists and arts organizations. Um, and then um, very exciting, um, you guys, the Public Art Subcommittee and the Arts Commission approved four public art pieces that are associated with the RESER. Um, that's what we're now calling it. Um, and Chris will tell us more about that. Um, the city has a program called a 1% for art program. And so when we do our own capital improvement projects, 1% goes into a fund for art. So um, there will be a, an amazing piece in the lobby of the PRCA. Um, there's going to be an amazing piece in the plaza and then two um, murals that are, are or installations that um, are going on the parking garage um, that's next to the research. Um, and then just really quickly, like kind of looking ahead to this next year, I think one of the things that, and I talked about this last year as well, but it's been, like I said, it's been a weird year. Um, uh, bringing back to this commission um, a set of policies, um, there's some very outdated language about our 1% for art policy, and that really needs to be updated, um, as well as just having some basic policies that, you know, uh, guide, uh, guide us in our mural program, um, temporary art, um, public art guidelines, and kind of best practices, best, pa best practices in public art management. Um, so those will be coming to, to this group in the next year. Um, uh, uh, we really want to do an equity and inclusion training, and we might end up doing a collaboration with other boards and commissions on that training, um, and then have our own um, kind of discussion and stuff after that, uh, just our group. Um, of course, the workshops, workshops and trainings that we collaborate with Hillsborough and TBC on. Um, you know, I know that some some of us are really passionate about connecting with our local cultural organizations and kind of diverse groups, and so we, you know, we're always interested in you know building those relationships and collaborations. Um, excited about the possibility of collaborating collaborating with some of our city boards. Um, that could be the Diversity Advisory Board or the Mayor's Youth Advisory Board. Um, and then just continuing to enhance our grant processes. Um, we really want to make it easy for people to apply for the grants. It's not supposed to be a mystery. It's not supposed to be hard. You don't have to be a professional grant writer to get a grant from the city of Beaverton. Um, and, and as well as, you know, even if English isn't your first language, we want to make sure that it makes sense and that we can provide help to people that um, our applying for our grants. Um, so uh, that's an ongoing, uh, you know, conversation and that evolves, but we really want to have um, grant processes that work for everyone and, and particularly serve BIPOC and marginalized organizations or groups. Um, as we know, just research shows that often um, less grant funding is, is distributed to historically marginalized groups. And we don't, we don't want that to happen in Beaverton. Um, and then looking ahead, um, you know, some of this is a little bit getting down into the administration, but um, really putting together an artist roster and registry so that we have, um, we know who the artists are in our community. And when we have, uh, we have opportunities that we can get them out. So we really just want to build a registry as well as our email list, um, continue to increase the diversity um, on our public art selection panels when we have public art to approve, as well as the commission. And then, um, yay, to finalize and celebrate the four significant public artworks associated with the reser. Um, and that's gonna be really amazing and exciting. Um, so that is my presentation. Stop sharing my screen. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Um, could I just ask everyone to mute? I think there's someone who's doing something else that's kind of distracting. <laughs> anyway, thank you. But no, thank you. That was a great overview of what 
we were able to and do in spite of all the craziness. But, oh, so looking forward to next year, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, and one of one of the conversations that we'll be having through the budget process, um, we also had to cancel 10 tiny dances this year um, because the really? dance, well, yeah, the dancers can't really rehearse. If, uh, <laughs> With, like six feet apart, I don't know, they probably would have been able to figure it out, but rehearsing now just isn't really an option for the dancers. So we decided to go ahead and cancel that as well. And so through the budget process, it's going to depend on what the budget's being like. Um, but, um, you know, if, if we have the funding in our budget, there's an opportunity per, per, to perhaps do another round of COVID um, relief grants, um, you know, at, <laughs> The, the pandemic continues, but our arts organizations are still struggling. So um, that's a, you know, it's unfortunate. So that that might end up being an option through our, our upcoming budget process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. It, it's Jane. Um, yeah. Some of the, I, when I volunteered, I guess two years ago for 10 Time Dancers, a lot of the performers were families or they were in the same bubble, if you will. And we talked about last year, the possibility of doing a virtual, you know, virtual performances um, from the performers or the artists. H has there been any discussion about that for this year? So we don't have to cancel it? Just doing something maybe on um, Zoom or a website where people can yeah. watch the performances? So what I think, um, and I'm certainly open to feedback, but um, so, it's wonderful that we have these virtual um, forums and, and ability, but people are also getting Zoom fatigue. <laughs> so, you know, there was sort of a, a, a crust or a peak of everyone doing stuff online and virtually. And what we're finding now is the audience or audiences are kind of dropping off. You know, people are, it, it was, it worked for a while and now uh, folks are like, I'm tired of Zoom. I'm not gonna watch, you know, <laughs> a performance online. Um, so we felt like a better use of that funding would be to put it back into COVID relief grants if, if that funding is still available um, the, for this coming fiscal year. And what does that mean? I, I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not sure what that was used for. I mean, it was just giving the artists money to do what they wanted to do with it, but it didn't. No, it, you know, no the, so the COVID relief grants um, were um, available to arts organizations. We did two rounds. The first round of funding, um, what uh, you had to have been an organization that had previously um, been funded by the city in the last four years, and um, you had to demonstrate an, an emergency, whether that's um, you can't pay your rent, or you're going to have to cut payroll, or you know um, you need to that kind of emergency. And then the second round we did, you didn't have to have to be an organization that had been funded bias in the past. Um, and that was when we got the four, four, four new organizations applying for those. So it was really about demonstrating an emergency. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Okay. And there was a committee that decided not to do the 10 tiny dances and thought some about other creative ideas or who, who um, decided that? The, uh, well, we haven't had a conversation yet with the grants committee about where we're going this next year with our grants. Um, in fact, that's a somewhat somewhat of a good segue into a discussion about our subcommittee. So that was one of the things I wanted to talk to the group about tonight. Um, and so we have several subcommittees. Um, one of them is the grant subcommittee. Um, so um, they helped us select um, our grantees this last year. Um, and so we need people to volunteer on that. Um, we also have a couple other committees, if, if you want me to transition into talking about that. Um, the subcommittees can have up to seven members. We can't have more than seven because then that becomes a quorum of the Arts Commission. Um, and uh, everyone's asked to serve on one subcommittee. Um, and I definitely don't recommend serving on more than two. It's just too time consuming. Um, and this document that I sent out with your agenda has a information about the various subcommittees that we have. Um, it includes information on scheduling, upcoming projects for that particular subcommittee, um, an estimate of the time commitment that subcommittee requires. Um, and um, 
the, one of the other subcommittees is the Public Arts Subcommittee, um, which has been very, very active this year, more active than probably a normal year, with the four public art uh, pieces related to the RESER, um, with several projects the Downtown Association um, has been wanting to do. Um, and I can talk a little bit about, I can go into more detail on these. Um, we also have an arts and, arts and economy subcommittee. Um, and that's going to be a subcommittee that's really looking at the economy, arts economy of, of Beaverton um, and identifying what the resources are in the community for artists, as well as where there are gaps. Um, there is a really amazing framework that the um, National Endowment for the Arts has put out. They do a lot of research on, um, I'm gonna share my screen and show you this real quick. Share screen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why I can't, can, every, can everyone see that? So they have a framework for kind of assessing the arts economy in your community and um, uh, determining where the gaps are. Um, so I think that's a that's going to be a really robust committee this year. Um, and talking about, I mean, obviously this last year hasn't been normal at all. I mean, to talk about the arts economy in Beaverton this last year is <laughs> sadly almost a joke, right? Because um, there hasn't been a lot that people have been able to do. Um, but assuming that the things do get better. Um, this will be an opportunity for commissioners to kind of do uh, inventory of what's available in Beaverton, and then we can talk about how can the commission best support the economy, arts economy. Um, and you see in this slide here, there's six different areas, and really thinking about, um, like I said, where the gaps are, where the low-hanging fruit is, are there things that we can do to fill gaps that might be, um, uh, you know, helpful to our community. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and then we have kind of two ad hoc committees, ad hoc committees that um, can be pulled in if you have to review materials like a marketing subcommittee. So if we develop any marketing type materials get to get input on um, and then an events, an events ad hoc committee, which obviously we haven't done any events this last year, um, but we will hopefully do more in the future. Um, so I know I just blitzed through that really quickly. Um, and the, the, like I said, I shared the document with you guys already. Um, and so I'm, I'm here for you guys to answer, you know, answer any questions or give input on it. And then what I'd like is that maybe by next meeting, um, everyone let me know which subcommittee uh, you would like to serve on. Um, and then we might have to do a little bartering if we get more than seven people on a subcommittee. Um, <clears throat> but if the if there's anything in there that interests you or you have any questions, um, I think this year we're really going to try to um, really get those subcommittees going. Um, the public arts subcommittee is going to have just as much stuff to do this year as this last year. The city has so many 1% for art projects coming along the pipe, including um, the library fountain project, um, a beautification project at the corner of Hall and Crescent, uh, where people will be entering the campus to go to the RESER, um, and I'm sure there will be more. Um, and I'm sure that the Downtown Business Association will be bringing us more, uh, more <laughs> public art projects to approve and review and approve. Um, so the grants subcommittee and the public arts subcommittee are gonna be really busy this year, I think. So I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, why, and this might be for Chris, uh, why are we calling the um, the Art Center the Reser instead of the Patricia? Yeah. I mean, I've just been around yeah. the Patricia Reser Center. So the uh, I had sent an email about that. Hi, Laura. Um, but I don't know if you may have missed it. Um, the uh, <laughs> full name of the Art Center will always be Patricia Reser Center for the Arts. That will be the official name. Uh, okay. The RESER is the informal short name that will be used um, in marketing materials and in kind of um, conversation. Um, the reason for it first was uh, it's a branding uh, for branding because mm -hmm. 
Patricia Research Center for the Arts, admittedly, and Pat says this too, is a mouthful, right? And so while we were at it this early in the process, we wanted to actually control what the abbreviated name would be. So that, you know, I mean, people will call it what they want to call it, but if we yeah, can have yeah. some influence, right, uh, we would uh, put out there and next year when the web, web, website, sorry, not next year, but later this summer when the website is launched, uh, you'll see more of it out there the re, as the research. But like <laughs> on the building and then official documents, letterhead, things like that will always be known as Patricia Research Center for the Arts. Perfect, thank you so much. Sure. Okay, well, looks like- uh, I got Chris. So there. Yes, I'm here. Sorry. I'm just curious how yeah, the naming project. I wasn't. I wasn't a part of that, but I just funny. The PRCA. Did anybody come up with maybe the parka? <laughs> the parka. Yeah. There's there's people that. It's funny that there was at least one person on staff that would say parka. Um, and yeah, and we always had PRCA as a working title. You know, in the project behind the scenes. Right. Um, we we wanted to avoid. Uh, as much as we can, uh, PRCA being the official name out there because there's PNCA and acronyms are not very descriptive, right? They're, they're not very welcoming. <laughs> it's like, what is that PRCA? But um, mm -hmm. so we really doubled down on the RECER and there's a sense of place that goes with the RECER, it's a place, right? And also on the RECER family name who, uh, who has such goodwill in the community in Oregon. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad somebody threw out Parka. I think it's pitchy, but yeah. Parka. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> the shortened one is a little classier than saying like the Schnitz. Yeah, <laughs> interesting, Sharon, you mentioned that because uh, from what I've heard, actually the uh, Jordan Schnitzer is not a huge fan of the Schnitz. So we wanted to avoid something like that where Pat and her family had a say in it. Okay, well, we're rolling right along and it's time for staff phasing updates. Beth? Well, um, sure. I'm going to share my screen one more time. Okay. <laughs> um, I sent this out to you guys via email, but I wanted to uh, highlight it. Um, and actually, I'm not sure. Now that we have the new members, you, they might, you guys, the new members might not have seen this yet. Um, and I'm not trying to steal Chris's thunder, but I'm gonna. <laughs> it's your thunder, um, Beth, go for it. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I'm gonna pull up a description of this project really quick. Um, and of course my screen went. So Chris, why don't you talk about it really fast while I do this? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. So this is the first of four public artworks uh, at the campus, like Beth mentioned earlier, and it is up. You can go and see it. It's, it's amazing. It's called Common Threads um, by four local artists who teamed up. Um, and it's really, in short, it's meant to represent, I love the title, you know, um, especially during these times, and it's meant to represent uh, the future uh, with uh, young people uh, up top resting on the shoulders of Beaverton's history and all the panels represent different elements. Um, and this is on the corner of Rose BG and uh, Crescent, um, what we call the 100% corner for the, for the garage because there's the hotel on the other side that will come online in a, in a couple of months and then the Rice, uh, also the uh, building there. Um, so uh, people visiting the center, also using the parking garage, will be able to see this clearly over there. Yeah, it's really exciting. And I'm going to share just a little bit of what the artist wrote um, for you guys. Um, this was by artists Addy Boswell, Van Cooley, Sarah Seastream, and Antoine Thomas, again titled Common Threads. Um, and it says, as contemporary artists, we rest on the shoulders of all the craftspeople who came before us. We also rely on the social structures our ancestors have built and rebuilt because creativity thrives where there is an underlying, underlying order. Um, we focused on the themes that continue to circle throughout Beaverton's history and common threads, threads that connect us to the past and the future. 
The two children artists involved in their work represent the creative future of the area and are surrounded by stars, the universal and mysterious. The artists grow out of the history of the bottom half, which is grounded by an Oregon white oak tree. This savanna form oak can live more than 400 years and provides acorns that are an important food source and were an important food source for many native animal species. Indigenous people use the acorns for food as well and burned oak overgrowth to protect their hunting and enhance the growth of edible plants such as camas and the collection of wasp nests. Um, later, the oak was logged for its hard, strong and close grain wood used in shipping, uh, shipbuilding, furniture, cabinets and fence posts. A beaver dam also grounds the piece at the, um, as the beavers work on the swampland created the fertile conditions that encourage the diversity of agricultural that you see today. And then I won't read all of this, but um, there's a lot of symbolism in the um, images in the bottom, um, spider webs, um, uh, native species, including camas flowers, wapato, salmon berry, cattails, hazelnuts, uh, horseradish plants, um, a combination of logs and bolts of cloth um, representing those industries, um, film, film reels that um, represent the silent film company uh, that began in Beaverton, um, and then the hand weaving on the loom. So um, there's a, a, a basket weave on the, the, the skirt of the young woman there um, is based on a traditional um, Hannes Kuss um, weaving basket weave pattern. In fact, um, Addie Boswell, the lead artist on this project, um, consulted uh, uh, the Sarah Seastream um, and she, that's actually her personal basket weave, her personal design that she um, created. Um, and one of the things that we did with this project was we actually ended up increasing the budget uh, at one point in order to pay um, an extra um, commission to a Sarah Seastream for her expertise in the Native American and indigenous uh, um, history and symbolism. Um, and kind of as part of our focus on equity and inclusion, uh, we felt really it was really important to us that we didn't just ask for input, but we also uh, made her an equal part in the artistic process. Um, but it's a really exciting piece and um, uh, one, of, one of a few more to come. Beth? Yeah. Can I just ask a question real quick? Um, were we was was it part of discussion at some point that we were going to have some in, an interpretive panel or something that explains the symbolism in the in that mural piece for um, for anybody? Is there anywhere that that would be accessible on the site? Yeah, we are talking about that. Um, there will definitely be a plaque that goes with it that will have a much shorter description. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're talking about interpretive signage on the campus. Um, uh, not totally sure um, where that will be or how that will all pan out, but um, uh, I agree with you that I think some sort of interpretive signage will be really important um, and maybe even signage in more than one place, whether that's, you know, inside the parking garage and on the campus or um, to be determined. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are considering two spots for that particular piece. So one near the piece and one in the elevator lobby of the garage. There's, so as you use the elevator lobby, you'll, you'll have a place that has the description. But as Beth said, it'll be a, a abbreviated description, but there will be acknowledgement of it. So. Great. And the plaques will also have a link to the city's art page. Um, where it, so the plaques will say for more information about this piece and the Beaverton Arts Program, please go to beavertonoregon.gov slash arts. So we'll make sure that we have all of the information on our website as well. Um, Maybe Beth, uh, would you guys consider a QR code or something like that exactly too? Exactly what I was going to say. Would it be easier? Yeah. That's a funny. QR code. You, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. You're thinking along the same lines. <laughs> we've had we've had Great. several discussions about QR codes and. <laughs> If they're going to be something that people continue to use in five or 10 years, you know, we don't know. Um, we assume yeah. that the beavertonoregon.gov URL uh, is probably pretty stable. Um, and if, and of course, if the city of Beaverton decided to change its website, would be able to redirect pages if, if that happened, which is highly unlikely. But um, so we decided to go with the URL link uh, rather than a, than a QR code. Um, 
that's sort of where we're at. <laughs> or maybe both. I mean, there's no disadvantage to both, I wouldn't think. But yeah, the thing is, there's limited space because um, I mean, we with the descriptions and all that, we do have had to make some decisions on one or the other. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. And we're also going to be providing the plaques in both English and Spanish um, so that um, limits limits the what can be put on it a, a little bit as well. So well, Chris, would, would it be possible, though, then um, at some point that maybe uh, in the lobby of the Reister that there's a a um, you know, there's a there's a, a, a trifold or whatever that talks about the art at the Reister and maybe it includes that with all of the other pieces and has, you know, the description about what influenced, you know, whatever, sure. the artists, et cetera. And then that way it's something that people who, who walk in casually could say, I'm interested in that mural. What can you tell me about it? And it's something Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And it's also, you know, we'll have at the research site website, we'll have a, we'll have a visit page and, and we can also add a note about public art there, of course, as part of the architecture and the piece and then, um, and the place. And then um, I, I would want to think, collaborate with Beth uh, on, is that brochure or that trifold just on those pieces or it's featuring those pieces, but then talking about the entire city's public art program. So we get people to walk around the city and also encourage them to check out other pieces of art. But yeah, definitely. I'm thinking of when you walk into the Beaverton building, there's a TV screen there, you know, and I'm wondering if there could be something like that that could integrate a lot of different things about upcoming performances and- Yeah, uh, there are, there are screens. And then plans. also, oh, okay. Yes, but definitely. That's another place that this kind of a thing, if there was a video about the art of the Reeser, you know, that it could loop around in there, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Different times of the day, playing different things on the screens. Absolutely. Yeah. Or the library too. Get them involved. Yeah, the library gets asked questions. You know, they're a huge source of, of information to our community. Well, did we just want to segue right into Chris and his PRCA or the RESER, I should say, updates? Do you want to talk about the insignia sculpture? Oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> just a really brief update about that. I know everyone keeps asking every month and I'm asking the same questions. Um, insignia is the, the three public art pieces that are going in at the public safety building. And we do actually have an actual installation date. It will be January 29th. Um, it's been delayed for several reasons, and then the local fabricator had to coordinate with a local company that specializes in doing public art installations and installing everything, um, and they, they weren't available until January 29th, so, but <laughs> it's supposed to go in on January 29th, um, and of course, we'll send lots of photos and video once it's actually <laughs> up and running. Um, uh, oh, and then I did want to make one more note. Um, I mentioned this earlier as well, but um, next month we'll be doing elections. So they, uh, the, our bylaws state that we have a chair, a vice chair, and a recorder. And a recorder is the person that takes notes at the meetings. Um, so if you're interested in serving as chair or vice chair or recorder, um, let me and Shelly know. Um, and then that will be a process where, um, you know, someone nominates someone and then We'll take a vote um, at the next meeting about selecting our next officers for the year. And that is all I had. Unless anyone has questions, we can hand it over to Chris. Okay, uh, I know we're running a little bit late, so I'm going to give you. I'm going to talk very quickly, but please, please feel free to ask questions. So, um, and for the new members, uh, by the way, I'm happy to meet up with you over Zoom at any time to tell you about the history of the Patricia Research Center for the Arts and the way it's gonna work and all of that fun stuff. So um, please um, get in touch through Beth and we can, we can talk, talk about it. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna switch over to photos. I had some photos, but to keep it on tr this time, I wanna be respectful of your time. I'll just speak through this. Um, we uh, construction is progressing 
really well. Uh, the center continues to rise and it's quickly changing every week. Uh, in recent weeks, there's a lot going on, but in recent weeks, some of the highlights have include, you know, interior walls uh, going up, uh, exterior, what we call the wood curtain lobby wall has gone up now. Soon we'll actually start seeing uh, glazing and glass uh, going in on the front side of the building. So when you're driving by, you'll see it there. Uh, interior also on stage, lots of conduit being installed. Rigging is getting ready to be uh, measured and installed. On the north side of the building, which is, which is kind of around the creek, uh, not, not very accessible, but kind of around the backside, you'll see um, the exterior cladding actually starting to go up, the final siding, which is very exciting. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, in, in my role as kind of owner or client uh, with the city team, uh, there's many, many meetings buzzing right now with reviewing shop drawings from various contractors, uh, including, for example, we're looking at the final signage for the building right now. We've designed it and now we're getting uh, contractors to submit what they're actually going to build. So um, just so you know about signage a little bit, we've taken a really thoughtful approach to not only donor signage and wayfinding signs and all of that stuff, but uh, building dedication signage and land acknowledgement signs at the entrance of the, of the center, uh, just off uh, the door there uh, and the exterior will have an acknowledgement sign, which is um, you know, the typical signs you see dedicated on this date, city council, mayor, you know, that sign, but also right next to it, we're gonna have a land, permanent land acknowledgement sign acknowledging the centuries of indigenous people that have shepherded this land. So we're working on that with the city's cultural inclusion team and making sure we use the right, uh, acknowledge the right um, native peoples and uh, the right language there as well. Um, so, uh, about the timeline, you've heard me talk about this in the past, but we right now are still tracking on uh, completing the building later this year, this calendar year, and then opening early next year. Um, and uh, there are various reasons for that. Uh, the building is once the construction is finished, doesn't mean we can open the doors the next day, right? We have to move in, uh, ramp up the staff, train what's called commission the building, uh, shake it down, kind of make sure it's working, everything's working right. And then we'll open um, uh, early 2022. Also because we want to, we get a chance to open once. You've heard me say this before and we want to make sure it's right. Um, and post pandemic, looking at the lingering effects of the pandemic, people's willingness to return to theaters, keeping a really close eye on that uh, through the industry nationally and talking to colleagues about when that might happen on a regional level and then for touring artists as well. Um, at, because part of our, what we do at the center will be a presenting series uh, in a variety of genres that presents touring artists. And just like everything else in the live uh, performance world, that's at a standstill right now, right? And it, it will be one of the last things to come back. Um, so moving really quickly, um, um, we, are uh, also um, the capital campaign. So there was a, if you recall, well, you do know, there's an $11.2 million that we've had to raise on the private side to fund construction costs. And uh, we've raised all but $108,000 today. So we've wow. raised $11.1 million in the last three years. So kudos to the community for stepping up. That includes, as you've heard me say, two gifts of literally five or ten dollars five dollars up to hundreds of thousands of dollars businesses individuals foundations who have donated many of you have also, are also donors so mm -hmm. thank you um, we're in the middle of the seat naming campaign where each of the 550 seats get it gets a plaque for a thousand dollars people can buy a plaque for the life of the seat which is estimated to be you know at least 15 years uh, and we are at 276 seats. So that's pretty amazing. That's, that took a big jump uh, in um, December, actually, because a big fan uh, and supporter of the project in the Indian community, a man named Gidu Sriram, um, who's uh, really been connected, uh, really engaged that community to buy something like uh, 
uh, almost like 60 seats or so uh, yeah. in December. So it's it it was it's really touching when we see that kind of support. Um, so that's called fill the seats, and that campaign is ongoing. We want to sell all 50 seats. If you're interested or you know of someone, please get in touch with uh, with us, uh, with me, and and uh, through uh, um, through Beth. Um, let's see. Um, so uh, we're working on the management agreement. I won't go into very much detail. I, I did last time. So there's um, uh, per council's kind of um, history with this project and kind of deep dive into the best way to operate the center. You've heard me say, so uh, the center will be always city owned, but operated by a nonprofit. That is the nonprofit I work for now. And that's the nonprofit, nonprofit that is uh, the capital, running the capital campaign, the Beaverton Arts Foundation. And currently, we're in the middle of developing a, a long-term agreement, uh, likely five years, uh, between uh, the Beaverton Arts Foundation, which will be PRCA Inc., 501c3, um, and the city, uh, the owner of the facility. So there's lots of moving parts in that agreement. I gave a council presentation and work session and, on December 1st, which was very helpful. And we're in the process of bringing new counselors on board at, uh, on the project. And also our new uh, city uh, manager, Kurt Wilson, we're we'll briefing him next week on the project to bring up to speed. So that's going well. Uh, we anticipate wrapping that up by uh, at the latest late March. Um, and then we uh, we're, we'll be ramping up staff for the center over the next year, slowly. And uh, the next staff position is the position of production manager. And I hope uh, to post that position uh, late this month, early next month. So keep an eye out. Uh, it'll be posted on the Beaverton Arts Foundation site, which is the kind of the places that houses this project right now. Uh, I'm looking for a really experienced uh, production manager who can handle rigging, lighting, sound, and all of the activating a center like this. So I'll, I'll be sending it to you and please forward uh, qualify people to, to the job site, to, to us. and. I'd love your help with that. Uh, later on in this uh, summer and next year, we'll be hiring different positions. Uh, for example, a marketing director, house manager, um, uh, a marketing assistant. And then uh, this staff will be about 13 people full time at the center, which is the right size staff for this size center. Uh, and then also there'll be plenty of volunteer opportunities. So. As we get closer to opening, there'll be uh, opportunities to sign up for ushers will all be volunteers, uh, reporting, of course, to a house manager, which will also be hired, and also um, gallery, art gallery docents, as well as sp special projects from time to time. So we're going to rely on volunteers quite a bit. So please, um, I'll, I'll be asking you to get the word out. And uh, also, if you're interested, you can get in touch now. I'll add you to a database. And when it comes time, we'll, we'll get back in touch with you uh, on the volunteering side. And then uh, to wrap it up, let me quickly look at my notes here. Um, uh, you heard, we've talked about the research now uh, quite a bit uh, as far as the branding of the facility. And so we're starting to work on a website. Um, the style guide and branding uh, are pretty much almost done and I'll have more to share with you at the next meeting. But we're working with a great firm in Portland called The Felt Hat. Um, they're wonderful. And so uh, we're branding the research and uh, looking at the visual identity and then the, the site. So just to clarify for people, uh, the city owns the facility, but the destination site will be research.org which will be your site you go to to buy tickets and engage with the organization in many ways. So um, that'll that'll be a presenting arts organization. The facility will be a presenting arts organization uh, as well as a rental facility and edu arts education activities and community outreach. So those are our four pillars, but that'll all be the, uh, at the, at the research.org. So, that website will launch later this summer with hopefully a splash page a little sooner. We're timing it right so that it ramps up to the early 2022 opening. Um, and I think uh, with that, oh, one last thing, there's another city council presentation coming up to update council in a public forum uh, on um, at city council meeting on February 2nd. 
So please mark your calendars. Virtually, we would love to see you there as arts commissioners. Uh, you'll get a full update. Uh, you'll see the update with council. It'll be construction, fundraising, and operations, future operations update where we are uh, on planning. Some of the same things you've heard now, but in a, in a different setting as well. Any questions I can, I love your questions. So please, please throw me a couple, will you? <laughs> yeah, Rebecca. What time will that be on February 2nd? Uh, the the meetings council? start at 6.30 p.m. 6.30, and okay. They're all okay. online now. We don't know where we are exactly on the agenda yet, but once yeah. we know, we'll send it out to all okay. of you. Okay, great, thank you. And I'd also like to uh, congratulate you on that wonderful walkthrough video you guys did. That was awesome. I really thank you. enjoyed watching that. Thank you. And um, so wonderful. Will you do another one? Or? Yeah, we will as it gets closer. And as we're able to take more and more people through, I would love to send, take you all through the center, of Ooh, course. That would uh, be great. In, in small groups. We're trying to time it in such a way. So um, there is, uh, I'm doing an interview next week for Good Day Oregon. So you'll see that uh, out there as well as a lifestyle piece. They're very interested in the center and we'll do, uh, uh, me and a city colleague will take uh, that host through the center as well. So that, that should be on the news on Good Day Oregon. Oh, great. So fun to see. Okay, anybody else have any questions for Chris? Nope. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. And thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll adjourn the meeting and keep in mind that February 10th at 6.30 is our next meeting. And think about whether you want to nominate yourself or someone else to be chair, vice chair, or recorder. All right. Thank you for, uh, for all uh, your attention tonight. I know it's a long meeting, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks. Okay. Good to see Bye. you guys. Good to see you great all. Meeting.